Hi, I'm Kevin McGowan. Let's talk about warblers. Like most birders, I love warblers. They're such a great blast of color and pattern in the spring. After a long winter in central New York with mostly only a few drab birds here and there, it's like the dawn of a new year when the warblers arrive in April and May. My birthday's in mid-May, at the peak of migration in New York and in Ohio where I grew up. And it's always been like I get birthday presents of warblers and it's awesome. Lots of warblers are strikingly marked in bright colors and patterns, which can make some easy to identify. But warblers can be a challenge, too. They're constantly in motion and often forage high up in the trees. In fact, there's a common ailment among birders called warbler neck. It's a sore neck you get from looking so high up in the trees for so long and so intently. Moving fast and staying high up means that you often only get glimpses of these birds, and you need to be ready to use all the hints you can get for warbler ID. And that's what this series is designed to help you do. We'll be talking about how to quickly recognize diagnostic color patterns, what to look for where on a warbler. We'll go over which clues are important characteristics to pay attention to and which ones really don't help that much. We'll discuss how to categorize warbler songs to help you make a quick ID. Fortunately, they sing a lot. Lots of other warblering tips too. I can't help you avoid warbler neck, but I can help you get the most out of your warbler watching. Please join me to talk about warblers.